Thank you for listening to The Luminous Mind, episode 56. Yeah, I think that busy people are the, the best group of people that need this more than anybody else. And not because you need to have less sleep, right? It's, it's not because we need more hours in the day. It's that we need to use the hours we have more effectively. Benjamin Franklin once said, Do not curse the darkness, rather light a candle instead. If you are ready to set your mind on fire, then prepare yourself for the Luminous Mind with your host, Rebecca Bowman. Today's fire starter is Jeff Sanders. He's the host of the 5 a.m. Miracle Podcast, which has ranked number one in iTunes in the self-help and business categories. He's been nominated for 2005 Podcast Award and exceeded 1 million downloads. Jeff is a 10-time marathon runner, personal development junkie, and passionate raw vegan. He's also a productive author and coach specializing in helping to dominate your day before breakfast. Jeff blogs every week at jeffsanders.com, and you can find him on Twitter at Jeff Sanders TV. Welcome, Jeff. Thanks a lot. It's good to be here today. Yeah, it's so fun to have you on and, and find out how us super crazy people survive early in the morning. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So do you want to give us a little bit more information about yourself, um, like your family, hobbies, um, passion, and then profession? Sure. That sounds good. Um, I live in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, my wife and I live here uh, with our little dog, Benny. Uh, no, no kids yet. That's definitely uh, something that's a uh, plan that's on the way. We bought a house about two weeks ago. And so, yeah, having a kid is probably the next thing on the list as far as a life checklist is concerned. Um <laughs> Yeah, in terms of like personal hobbies for me, I mean, outside of my business where I'm working on a lot of media production with podcasting and blogging and videos, um, outside of doing that, I like to run trails. It's one of my favorite things to do. So running trail marathons is definitely a huge passion of mine. Uh, it's probably where I, I spend most of my time when I'm not working as I'm out on the trails, hiking and running and exploring. I, just, I love to do that. So that's kind of a big part of, of who I am as well. Uh, and you know, doing my work as far as my profession is concerned, uh, it's definitely all with you know podcasting. And uh, now I'm, I'm writing a book and working on all kinds of, of fun internet projects. And so that kind of consumes my life and my time now is lots of creative work, which I really enjoy. That is awesome. So can you tell us the inspiration behind your company and how you came up with your 5 a.m. miracle? Yeah, that kind of just grew out of this lifestyle change that I made um, really kind of on accident. Uh, I was training for a marathon about three or four years ago, and I realized I ran out of time to do my weekly runs. Like I was doing the long run on the weekends, which is recommended by every marathon coach in the world, uh, but they also say you should run during the week plenty of times. You know, shorter runs are really unnecessary. You can't just run once a week. And, but I was having a really hard time making time for it, you know, after work or trying to squeeze it in on a lunch break or something. And so I realized the only time I had was before work. So I had to wake up really early to do that, which I was not at all excited about. I was just dreading the idea of it, but I needed to figure out the time. So I woke up early one morning and just gave it a shot. And it was amazing. I was just hooked from day one because I felt so great. Like the run went really well. I was more alert at work that day. I felt more energized. And I realized there's a lot of potential here. If I wake up early consistently, I could have that time for myself. Even though I'm not going to run you know, or a marathon before breakfast, I could work on a big project. I could go do something that I care about. And so that's where the kind of 5 a.m. miracle blossomed from, just this reality that I could utilize my early morning hours in an effective way to achieve my biggest goals in life. And so then I wrote an ebook about it, and then I launched a podcast about it. And now here I'm a couple, couple of years later, and I'm still talking about the same topic, and it's still extremely powerful in my life. And, and there's so many things that blossom from that. So, yeah, I think it's a really amazing concept. I think that people, when they embrace it, uh, you do get so much growth out of that. And so, yeah, I think it's an awesome thing to do. Yeah, well, and I can already kind of hear people saying, I am so busy. You know, sometimes I need that extra sleep. Um, do you do busy people really need like more hours to get more work done? I mean, it just sounds like then they're in this perpetual will of just working all the time. What would your be your advice for people who might be apprehensive about your 5 a.m. workup time? 
Yeah, I think that busy people are the, the best group of people that need this more than anybody else. And not because you need to have less sleep, right? It's, it's not because we need more hours in the day. It's that we need to use the hours we have more effectively. And that's the reason why I opted for a 5 a.m. wake-up call was because I realized that when I woke up early, uh, it tends to be that I'm the only person that's awake in my household. My wife is still asleep. My dog is still asleep. Like, it's just me. And so I'm able to have a little bit of alone time. And that time could be spent running, could be spent reading, could be spent working on a project. But whatever it tends to be, I have this time by myself. I can, you know, collect my thoughts. I can meditate. I can, you know, write in a journal. I can do whatever I wanted to do that's going to allow me to be better with my day. And one of the the most important things I always emphasize with an early morning wake-up call is that it's about being intentional with your time. And so if you're going to wake up early, you need to utilize those hours. Otherwise, there's no point. You may as well just sleep in. And when you when you wake up and you're intentional with your time, then you're able to plan it more effectively. And when you plan it, you can cut things that don't matter. You can add in things that do. Uh, you can really take the thing, the biggest goals you're working on and prioritize those early in the day, which gives you the better chance of getting them done anyway. And then by the end of the day, the things that matter most have been accomplished, which is why the, the catchphrase of my site is to dominate your day before breakfast. Because when you, when you do that, when you really focus on that early part of the day, getting those big things done, the rest of the day can be a lot less stressful because you know you've already been successful for the day. Yeah. And so that's, that's the emphasis. That's the whole reason why this works. So if you're busy, you need this more than anything else because that's the only way to prioritize your time and your activities to make sure that the things that really do matter are getting done and all those other things that you know you want to do uh, will have to be postponed or delayed until it's the best time for those things. And I, got the, I realize that more and more and more that the busier I get, the more that I realize it's just busyness for things that a lot of times doesn't have to get done. I might want to do it, but it's not necessary. And so my days are really based on this kind of a must-do philosophy. So if it has to happen today, I'll get it done. If it doesn't, it probably won't. And I, I'm going to live with that. And that's a hard reality sometimes we want to do so much. But, it, you know, the time is finite. So we have to really choose our hours and activities very wisely. So I'm an early morning riser. And I've noticed that um, sometimes I can I can really stay focused and get a lot done on that day. And sometimes I'm like, well, is it just because I have more hours or – and there, then there's other days that I just like I just flounder around. How does a busy person really maximize their time and improve that quality of work that that they're supposed to capture before breakfast? I mean, if you want to be focused and you want to you know optimize your time, I think one of the best things to do is to be well rested, and, and that comes from the the habit of going to bed early, which allows you to then wake up early and feeling refreshed. And I know that one of the key things that I, I really try to do for myself personally is I have an evening boundary of 8 p.m., which means at 8 p.m. everything stops. I turn off the computer, turn off the phone. I'm done for the day in terms of work. That way I can be asleep, hopefully, by 9, 9.30, and then I'm awake at 5 and actually alert and ready to begin my day. And when that happens, then the rest of my morning is going to be more productive. I'll be more alert, more focused. Um, Also, I also really like to emphasize an early morning workout because I read a great book recently called Spark uh, that talks all about how exercise uh, connects neurons in your brain and allows you to think in your most optimal way just after a, a good workout. And so your best time to do kind of your most difficult creative work in the day is going to happen after that morning workout. And so if you can schedule your day in a way that that actually works out for you, that's optimal and really allows your brain to function at its best, which allows you to then uh, be not only more productive, but also more creative and, and, and think more clearly so your work can be at its highest quality. Well, I can already hear some people say, too, well, I'm not a morning person, so is there any way you can optimize all this, um, all the benefits that we've talked about in a later time of the day? Or, I mean, is it just because you're getting up at 5 a.m.? Well, there's two answers to that question. And the first answer is I was also a late night night owl for a long time. Like, I loved late nights, but I realized it wasn't going to work for the way that I wanted to live my life long term with the goals I wanted to achieve. So I real I became that morning person. Uh, and so and if you are now a night owl, you can also become that early morning riser as well. It's definitely doable. Uh, and the second part of that is that, yes, you can optimize the late nights if you want to. But the studies have shown that the, the vast majority of people are going to have more willpower, more discipline, more creative energy early in the day than they are late at night. Even if you get like a second win later, later in the day, it's still not going to be as great as the morning win you had before. And so if you really want to be at your best, then the best time to do that is in the morning. That's great. Well, see, in my household, I mean, I have half that's like, I'm a night person. And <laughs> anyway, so that's just funny. I wish I could get them all convinced to go to bed early. That would help me a lot. But that is hard to do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
So what services do you offer your clients? And tell us about how, I mean, I just noticed your website is split up into different areas. Can you go through those? Yeah, so I, I've divided all the content on my site into the different categories. And so everything that I discuss, whether it's a blog post that I write or a podcast episode that I produce, uh, they're all divided into categories. And so if you want to just learn about early mornings, there's a whole category of all that content, or just productivity or daily habits or personal growth. I uh, also have fitness and nutrition on there as well. And so basically anything that involves the early morning hours and being your most productive self, uh, you can find that content on the site. That's definitely there as kind of just a really easy way to find the stuff you're looking for. Um, I also have, you know, the, the pot on the top of the page, I've got like a podcast link for my main show. I also began a new audio blog podcast about two weeks ago, uh, which just, it just features me reading my own blog posts, uh, which is a new thing that I started because I had a lot of, of blog content that I had created that people weren't actually, uh, they didn't have time to read, right? That you're busy people. It's hard to make time to read articles. And so I'm making everything I do now available as an audio production, which is, uh, I think, more convenient. And that's kind of the idea because as we get busier, uh, things need to be easier. That's kind of the whole point. And so I try to produce content that people can consume in an easy way and then be able to apply that later on in the day. So yeah, at this point, that's kind of the bulk of what I do is, is a lot of audio production and it's all broken down into categories there. Yeah, like on the commute home. Yeah, most people listen to podcasts uh, during commutes. Like that's a very, very common time. And my show comes out Monday mornings. And so a lot of people, it, it is their Monday morning commute time. That's when they listen to the show. So what other services do you offer? I have a, a coaching service that I offer, which allows me to work one-on-one -on -one with people. Um, recently, it's been more entrepreneurs, but really it's open to anybody uh, who wants to be more productive and just kind of allow me the chance to dig into your life and figure out exactly uh, how to optimize your time. Uh, I also have a product that's called 47 Strategies, which is a productivity self-assessment, which allows you to figure out where you're productive now and where you can improve and gives you a whole checklist of all these different areas you could work on and ideas of how to do that. Um, so those are the two uh, bulk of the offers I have now. Um, in the future, I'll have things like I have a book deal I'm working on now, so I'll have that later on in 2016 and a course of, uh, later on as well. So, But for now, yeah, the coaching is available and the assessment too. That is great. Before we go on, let us take a minute and hear about our sponsors. Hey, Firestarters. Are you looking for a new way to listen to the Luminous Mind? Try listening on Stitcher. Haven't heard of Stitcher? Think of it as radio on demand. You can listen to the Luminous Mind anytime, anywhere. There is no downloading, no syncing, no wasted memory. Just stream your favorite podcasts such as the Luminous Mind. Stitcher is available on iOS, Android, Nook, iPad, and also from your favorite internet browser. Don't have Stitcher? Download it free today at Stitcher.com or in the App Store. And make sure you rate and review The Luminous Mind so together we can continue to light minds on fire and change the paradigm of education. Luminous Mind with Jeff Sanders, host of the 5 a.m. Miracle Podcast. So what successes have people seen using your products and services? I think the, the biggest success that I've seen is that people are able to look at their life and their business from a totally new, new perspective. Uh, as opposed to them kind of being reactive, they really take the proactive approach. It's one of the number one things that I see with my clients is that they're able to, to say, okay, wait, wait a minute how could I do this better? And how can I really ask the right questions to make sure that my day is going to be optimized for me? Whether they do a 5 a.m. wake-up call or not, it doesn't really matter. The point is that they're being more intentional with their time. They're more intentional with how they approach their day. And the, the priorities, the biggest goals, the things that really matter most end up at, at the front of their day. And therefore, they get more progress on those goals. And they achieve things faster than they ever thought they would before. And that's the real thing that I go for with my clients is making sure that, you know, you've got these huge goals in your life, but they're not getting done. And there's a reason behind that. And usually the reason is you, whether you, whether you want to hear that or not. <laughs> and so if you, once you kind of you know, wrap your brain around the fact that you have the power to change your own life, then you're able to really take that driver's seat and say, okay, now I'm going to go make these changes and bring that to action and bring it to life. And so that's what I do with my clients. And it tends to work out pretty well. That's great. So we talked about like the neuro type science behind waking up early. What other benefits do people get from that 5 a.m. wake up call? One of the best things people always see when they wake up early is improved personal health, uh, which is kind of bizarre because you think that 
waking up early will actually give you less sleep and you'd probably be you know, more sick or less healthy. But the reality is that people, when they wake up early, they care more about their bodies. So they're going to do yoga. They're going to meditate. They're going to drink a morning smoothie, uh, go on a workout. Like all these things that normally would get postponed or never happen at all uh, end up happening in that first hour or two of the day, which then sets the tone for the rest of the day. And so for most people, if they want to make time at all for any kind of personal health, uh, that happens right away. It's not, you know, delayed till after work uh, when, it, when it never would happen anyway because you get too busy. It's going to happen right away before breakfast or during breakfast or whenever this case may be. You wake up, take care of yourself. And that's a, a really, really big benefit. Well, and I've noticed, too, like if I wake up um, early and I get the exercise in, then my eating habits are better, too, which is weird. I mean, usually I would think like if you're not if you're not exercising or whatever, you're going to be more conscientious about your food. But I'm finding like the opposite. You know, yeah, people, I- are, people are either totally on or totally off with that. I think you're working out and eating healthy or you're just on the couch eating Doritos. And that's just kind of, <laughs> you know, those are your two. Op- and and that, that's those are your only two options. But that's that we gravitate towards one or the other. We're either like thinking about our health and taking care of ourselves or we're just not. And so I think that the goal is to, to have a lifestyle, have a structure in place that allows that to happen just naturally, having those habits in place that guarantee your own success. Yeah. So you talked about like a, a habit tracker. Do you want to give us a little more information on that? I mean, how does that work and how does that help us become more productive? Yeah, the habit tracker is something that I started in a very simplistic Excel spreadsheet a few years ago, uh, just as a way to make sure that I was reminding myself every day of the few key things that I wanted to make sure happened every day. And then as those things would happen, I would just, you know, use a little checklist on, on the spreadsheet and mark off that I, I completed it for the day. And at the end of every week, I would look back and say, well, my goal was to exercise four times this week. I worked out, you know, three times. Like, okay, so next week I'll try to make sure I get all four in. And I would monitor these various habits, whether it was an early morning wake-up call, exercise, uh, working out a, a big project, whatever the case was, it's really just a simple spreadsheet to say, these are the key things that I want to see happen over and over and over again. And I'm going to remind myself that these things matter. And every day, go to that chart, check off the list, and c- continue to have that as the reminder. Because when you have that there, you're much more likely to actually not only do it that day, but then look back at the end of the week and say, well, here's how I can improve for next week. Here's how I can get better at this and guarantee that I don't make the same mistakes I made last week. And that's a really big part of the process. Well, and I find when it's written out and I kind of have a clear cut vision of what my goals are, I'm not mindlessly like scrolling on Facebook. You know, like, exactly. Like, I got yeah. stuff I got to do here. <laughs> so what habits do you have that help make you successful? Uh, a lot of these same things. I think one of the things that I focus on the most uh, definitely is a daily workout. I, I absolutely love to do that as far as get my own personal energy in. Uh, as far as like n- nutrition and diet, I always have a big Vitamix blender full of fruit and, and usually well, you just a green smoothie actually. So I'll have fruits and, and a lot of leafy greens blended up. And that's usually my breakfast. That plus a double espresso. So I have lots of extra crazy energy. Uh, <laughs> so my day really begins with that. Um, plus a lot of water. I drink water like a crazy person. So I'm very hydrated all day long, uh, which is a really big part of keeping the energy up, which for me is probably the most important like overall uh, perspective is how my day is approached. I want to make sure that I have energy from the minute I wake up all the way until I'm going to bed. And in order to do that, I have to have a lot of you know great diets and, and, and great habits of the day. But having that energy is what allows me to continually get more done. When the average person might be having an afternoon slump, I'm going to be chugging a bunch of bananas in a blender and then going and doing more work because I still have that energy and, and that desire to continue and that's a big reason why I'm able to optimize the, the, the hours I have when I'm awake as opposed to trying to say, well, I have to have more hours in the day. It's really more about just using the hours you have the, in the best way you possibly can. So for me, that means lots of energy. And when I have the energy, I'm just most likely going to get a lot more done than I ever would before. Well, I love how you're using natural, I mean, other than your double espresso, <laughs> yeah, sure. you're, you're definitely using more natural energies versus, you know, just, I mean, you see people that are just shoveling caffeine down like crazy, trying to get, you know, just extend their time versus really being wise about um, their their use of time and then also how they're taking care of themselves to, to have that energy. Yeah, That's it's very great. easy to rely on stimulants and caffeine and drugs and whatever else you want to, you know, lean on uh, just to get that extra, you know, boost in your day. But what I find to be most effective over the long term is that sustained energy throughout the day. And that for me comes from, you know, eating a lot of fruits and a lot of healthy foods, 
um, making sure I, wor I work out every day, and drinking lots of water. These are very basic, natural, healthy things, uh, but they allow my energy to stay more sustained and more level throughout the day, as opposed to having you know huge spikes and then drop-offs. So, yeah, I think it's, it's, really, it's really powerful uh, to, to lean on good food, and when you can do that, it helps in a big way. And that exercise too. I mean, I always think that, oh, well, if, I, if I'm tired, I'm going to feel better having that extra sleep. But it's really when I finally get up out of bed and, and get, that, get that workout in, like you said, that adds so much energy versus those extra hours of sleep sometimes. Yeah, That's definitely. Awesome. I think a morning workout is huge for so. sure. So you've got a nice uh, young wife and everything, but we, I wanted to know if you know, if you have an idea of what kind of legacy that you'd like to leave. That's a lovely question because it's so big. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm 30 years old, so I'm assuming my legacy will be left when I'm 90 or 100, maybe. Um, but I think that, you know, based on, on the work that I'm doing now and, and the kind of work that I want to continue to do as, as I go forward is that, w if anything, I want people to n know that energy and enthusiasm for life is such a critical component to living every day to the fullest. I think that if, if there's anything that I, I think that I do well from my own perspective is that I, I love to focus on high energy and enthusiasm every single day for life. You know, it could be raining outside like it is today in Nashville or it could be sunny. It doesn't really matter. It's just that you, the positive energy and the attitude towards life, the, the vigor for life, wanting to do more. I think that's uh, that's the legacy I want to leave. I want people to know when they hear me, hear my voice, hear my podcast, you know, buy my products, whatever the case is that they know they're getting someone who has that vigor for life and, and that wants more from it. And that it's all possible to do that. Like there's so many uh, very straightforward strategies you can take that will allow you to get those same results that I've received and hopefully will continue to receive as I go forward. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah, your your uh, vigor for life definitely comes through with your voice. I was teasing Jeff before we started recording that when I first listened to his podcast, I thought he was a kind of a seasoned guy. You know, it really comes out like he's very professional and everything. And I look at his picture, I'm like, holy crap, he's like way younger than I am. So, <laughs> so that's pretty cool. All right. So before we say goodbye, do you have any final parting words of advice for our listeners? And then go ahead and give them your contact information. Sure. Uh, the website is jeffsanders.com and my email address, if you want to email me, is jeff at jeffsanders.com as well. Um, I have podcast, The 5 a.m. Miracle, is on iTunes, and so all that stuff is there. Um, yeah, so as far as any last-minute advice, I think that uh, the one thing that I've seen over and over and over again is that intentionality is the most important thing. If you want to live a certain way and have a certain end result and, and a goal you want to achieve, then there has to be a plan in place, you know, like an on paper, on purpose. And if your life is planned, the odds of success go up tremendously. And that's one thing I always come back to is that if my life is not going the way I want it to and I'm really trying to get back on track, I, I go to my task manager, I go to my calendar, I, I get out a notebook and I just start planning things. And I, and I write it all down and I make sure that I have a plan to get the result that I want. And almost always it works just like clockwork. It's hard. It's a lot of work, but it does work and, and it does get the results. So like, if anything, just yeah, be intentional and, and write it all down. Well, I appreciate you coming on and talking with us today, and hopefully we're all energized to take your lead and get up at 5 a.m., be part of the oh, club. Exactly. <laughs> Five's a great time of day, for sure. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to The Luminous Mind. To learn more about Jeff Sanders and the 5 a.m. Miracle Podcast, go to our show notes at theluminousmind.net. Also, be sure to become a subscriber to our free email list so you can receive notifications for our weekly audio blog, The Spark. We would love to have you join our program. Do so by going to the scheduling tab and become a fire starter today. Help support the podcast by making all your Amazon purchases through the free Amazon widget on our website, theluminousmind.net. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Google+, get our audio content on YouTube, iTunes, and Stitcher. Leave us a review. Tell us how we can help you so together we can continue to light minds on fire and change the paradigm of education. 